Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I came across this uh, from Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox. The SEC will not allow FINRA to approve crypto custodians as broker dealers. Um, here's a perspective from Collins Belton, founding partner at Brookwoods PC. Uh, he was being interviewed on Laura Shin's podcast. Listen to this. But one of the things that we've been talking about, and it really frustrates me that it's, it's not more publicly known, is that a lot of these exchanges, I don't think their problem is, hey, these are securities and we like we don't want to offer securities. For the most part, in practice, for the end user and even for the exchanges, for most of management other than the compliance function, it's not really going to be a huge difference for them, whether they're issuing like this asset from a BD entity or a money transmitter. They're going to have very similar requirements in terms of customer identification. Now, yes, there are other obligations that will apply to a securities entity that may not apply to a money transmitter. But at the end of the day, for the most part, your customers, they're not really exposed to that. It may be a little bit more data collection. And even internally, most of the stakeholders aren't exposed to that. It's just you know additional compliance costs. So what frustrates me is that Coinbase has a broker dealer um, and as does do many other U.S. entities. The reason why they can't offer these products right now is not because they're intransigent and don't want to like offer any security. Like for them, it would be the same thing at the end of the day, right? Like I come to Coinbase or you just redirect me to Coinbase securities. I sign up same account. You have the same information. It's not going to be a huge difference to me either way. Um, and then I can get my Lend product. The reason why they can't is actually because the SEC also won't allow FINRA to approve crypto custodians as BDs. So talk about wanting to maintain complete control, right? Just a perspective here. Obviously, we're just spitballing. This is just speculation. But, um, you know, this opinion from Collins Belton, again, founding partner at Blockwood PC. We should also take into consideration what some of these former SEC chiefs and uh, commissioners are actually saying about the Ripple XRP lawsuit. Now, you know, we've heard a lot of positive uh, perspectives, I think, from lawyers and from uh, former SEC commissioners. Martin Volk posted this on Twitter, uh, and I wanted to kind of reiterate, this is from former SEC chief Robert Cohen. He drew parallels between the commission's case against Ripple with Blockvest LLC, tackled by the regulator in 2019. Cohen reveals that after losing the preliminary injunction, the commission filed for a reconsideration and the judge reversed the decision in favor of the SEC. So this is what happened in another case and uh, Robert Cohen is suggesting that this could happen in the Ripple XRP case. Former Chief Robert Cohen believes the SEC's case against payment giant Ripple is key. However, the outcome may not be as significant. The regulator is likely to file a motion for reconsideration on losing the case against Ripple. Cohen responded to a question about the implication of the commission's loss to Ripple in an interview. Uh, he drew parallels between a fraud case filed by the commission against Blockvest LLC and the ongoing suit against Ripple. The SEC suffered a rare defeat uh, in the Blockvest case in 2018 when Judge Curiel of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of California California issued a denial of its motion for a preliminary injunction against the firm, despite evidence of fraudulent representations of the SEC in the defendant's website's posting, the court denied the motion a preliminary injunction filed by the U.S. regulator. This did not last long, though, and attracted intense scrutiny from the industry, and on December 17, 2018, the SEC moved for partial reconsideration of the November order, and then the judge, as it turned out, reversed the decision in favor of the SEC. So what uh, Robert Cohen here is suggesting is that uh, they could do the same. Now, of course, this was a different judge. This was Judge Curiel from a different court in California all the way at the other side of the country. Um, nevertheless, it is a possibility. And um, I mean, I guess we should be prepared for this particular outcome. I don't want to bring doom and gloom, guys. I'm just saying, you know, this is uh, what a former SEC uh, chief said. So I wanted to thank Martin just for bringing that up. Uh, we also saw this guy's from John Dean, an interesting tweet thread here. He retweeted out John Reed Stark's tweet. Now this was a tweet thread um, with regards to uh, Grayscale's denial of the Bitcoin ETF. So this didn't have to do with the Ripple SEC case specifically. However, um, John Reed Stark here was defending the SEC and their decisions, basically minimizing the conflicts of interest. Sounds like he should not have gone to those meetings. Some SEC lawyers were way too cozy with their old law firms, especially those who leave their firm for the SEC and then return. It's nauseating, but most SEC staffers are hardworking, 100% independent, and not for sale. And uh, you guys can see if you uh, follow this tweet thread, you can see the crypto community, the XRP community rather, uh, was just blasting this guy with relation to the Hinman speech, uh, the Hinman situation in conjunction with Ethereum, and of course the Ripple XRP case. John Deaton here posted, John Reed Stark, come on man, you worked for the SEC for 18 years, and you believe in the SEC. You can do 
better than make a comment that Hinman was too cozy with his old law firm. It minimizes how egregious his conduct was because, as it turns out, it wasn't his old law firm after all. Sorry, but I've criticized the SEC many times, including in the WSJ, the Wall Street Journal. This is a, uh, a response from John Reed Stark. But I believe the SEC team is doing the right thing regarding crypto. Your followers will crucify me, and I get that and can't blame them because my position threatens their financial livelihood. So uh, John Reed Stark here just posting his Wall Street Journal article, which I have not read, but I will leave this in the description of the video for you guys uh, if you want to read it. It is uh, going to be um, under the John Deaton tweet thread, obviously, but it will be linked in that tweet thread. Uh, Crypto Law, who is John Dean, he responded down here, nobody wants to crucify you. Folks just want transparency, clarity, and answers. And, uh, you know, of course, we all know about the William Hinman speech. We all know uh, what he did, his connections with Ethereum and the former law firms that he worked for. John Reed Stark responding, well, I do not believe that the Hinman speech will win the day for Ripple supporters. I do agree that the IG should investigate any allegations of SEC staff misconduct, especially if a senior SEC official intentionally defied the SEC's chief ethics counsel. But then just down here, he says, I completely stand behind that post. I believe Ripple will ultimately lose, but also believe that if there were unlawful acts by an SEC official, that the IG should investigate. It's not binary. Good luck, though. I really do feel for you guys, whether you believe it or not. And then again, an onslaught of uh, responses by the XRP community, um, wondering how this guy, John Reed Stark, doesn't get it. Um, he's likely not following the case as closely as we are, so, I mean, I'll give him that. But anyway, just another uh, former SEC official, one who has been, uh, or one who had been with the uh, the organization for 18 years, weighing in on this matter, and uh, even, even going as far as saying down here, he doesn't actually believe Ripple will win and that they will ultimately lose the case. Um, so, you know, it's getting me wondering what will happen if the XRP we hold is deemed a security, or will it even matter? Will you be able to utilize your XRP, make money off it in another way? Perhaps leverage your stash of XRP as a market maker for profit, guys. I'm going to get to that shortly. I just wanted to mention, though, too, that uh, John Dean did say that uh, John Reed Stark is welcome on the Crypto Law Podcast at any point. Although we completely disagree on some things, a respectful and civil discussion about these important issues is needed more often. People need to escape their echo chambers and listen to the other side. I would actually love to see that. So uh, I really do hope John Deaton makes that happen. Um, Wanna keep moving guys, because there is some, uh, there's also been some FUD, been hearing from several people that their transactions this morning on Ripple's ODL platform was failing and that the system was down. One had to move to USDC and Circle Pay to continue remittances. Uh, anyone else heard anything similar? So here was uh, a, a, an apparent email that was sent out by Ripple's technical services team, uh, technical services at ripple.com, and that this uh, was in fact resolved. ODL service outage. This apparently happened on July the 2nd, 2022, on Saturday. Uh, RippleNet ODL services experienced a product outage from uh, this time to this time. The issue is now resolved and full functionality is restored. Uh, During the incident period, customers were unable to get quotes and processing payments in production. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience caused by this issue. Um, And then some people saying, this is fake. Look at the date on the note. Like you're trying to stir up trouble. Dated July the 2nd. And the reason is stated in the first line why it went down. So is it really down today or not? (laughs) Um, And then Enzo Lapino down here saying, Un maxi XLM qui remonte un souci de RippleNet ODL. Uh, Je vois que du... uh, Okay, so I'll just translate this for you guys. There's apparently an XLM maxi here who's just putting out some fake FUD to justify his tweet. After verifying... um, It was kind of weird because we didn't hear about this uh, talked about. And this was apparently happening on July 2nd. And now we're on the 4th. And so it's fake FUD. Uh, So on and so forth. This guy apparently posting this. uh, Sam at SamConnor1. Lead digital assets at The Digital Economist. uh, Founder of Stellar Global Discord. Light Mint strategic advisor, investor, entrepreneur. And uh, as you guys see here, apparently he is an XLM maximalist, according to Enzo here. So um, is it fake news? I mean, I haven't heard much about this either. So um, just be careful, guys, where you are finding your information. It's also funny here that he did mention uh, one had to move to USDC and CirclePay to continue the remittances. So um, just wanted to clear that up for you guys. 
But ultimately, I wanted to get to this, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman Yields, Liquidity Pools, Liquidity Tokens, the XLS-30D discussion for an XRPL automated market maker or an AMM has enormous potential for the network. This is what I wanted to talk about because this is where market makers are going to be able to potentially make some profits. This is an attempt to understand what Ripple's David Schwartz called the secret sauce of an XRPL AMM. So, you know, the other day, David Schwartz did mention this. I did a, a video about it uh, last week. I'll link that up here in the top right-hand corner. Here's an interpretation, guys, of what this could mean for XRP holders and how we could potentially be market makers first. A brief recap, automated market makers allow digital assets to be traded without permission and without traditional order books of buy and sell offers. Trading happens automatically using pools of available tokens called liquidity pools. Uh, users supply liquidity pools with tokens held in pairs like you uh, would find in a traditional order book and then represented by a liquidity pool token. By supplying the pool, you earn a small yield. On the XRPL, this would involve XRP plus issued tokens, anything on the DEX, the decentralized exchange. The price of these pool tokens is mathematically determined and varies from prices on other exchanges, prompting arbitrage, buying and selling on another exchange with better prices. In the long run, arbitrage keeps prices everywhere near the same level. So uh, just kind of giving us a concept of what arbitrage does there. But arbitrage has its own problems and risks. The XLS 30D discussion notes, they wait until the profit from the arbitrage transaction and thus the pool's expected loss exceeds the trading fees, all while racing against other people trying to do the same thing. Waiting until they can get a profit big enough to profit more than the trading fees they would incur, they slow price discovery and reduce liquidity. So that is the current problem that um, that we're finding ourselves in, or at least that um, that the uh, the developers of the XLS 30D uh, uh, protocol find themselves in. And so, how to solve that problem? Well, let me finish here. Then they pull tokens out and sell them at the liquidity pool's expense. So what can be done about this? In this video with David Schwartz, which I will link again in the description of this video, Ripple's David Schwartz shared that the XLS 30D proposal has a secret sauce that allows those to supply liquidity to take a large share of the profits that would normally go to arbitragers. The secret sauce. The GitHub discussions describes a function that continuously auctions off zero fee trading slots for arbitragers and gives these sums to liquidity providers, speeding up arbitrage because there is no trading fee eating up potential profits. So again, guys, all the links are uh, listed in this uh, tweet thread. We propose a unique mechanism where the AMM instance continuously auctions off trading advantages, charging them and giving these earnings to liquidity providers, allowing liquidity providers to take a large share of the profits normally taken by arbitragers. Using liquidity pool tokens, arbitragers can bid for a zero fee slot and then trade immediately with it without worrying about making more than the trading fee they would otherwise incur. Outbid for your slot, your LP tokens are refunded in a continuous process. This would seem to push bidding prices up to the thinnest margin where arbitragers can make a profit. The expected results of this new XRPL AMM mechanism though is increased liquidity and pool supplier profits while allowing arbitrage to remain profitable. So let me just read you guys this. The expected results eliminates wait time and race condition for auction slot holders. The arbitrager uh, narrows time windows in which the pool suffers decreased trading volume and liquidity providers additionally reap a share of the profits. So if you are a liquidity provider, you will take some of the profits that would otherwise go just to the arbitragers. The idea is that the XRPL AMM makes arbitrage faster with less risk while increasing profits for liquidity providers. So people or organizations or mechanisms providing liquidity all while increasing liquidity in the system overall. So this means a win for everyone. And I love the Oprah gif here. You get an upgrade, you get an upgrade, everyone gets an upgrade. There's much more to the XLS 30D uh, proposal, of course, uh, votable trading fees and the incredible power harnessed by the XRPL's pathfinding. An XRPL AMM would be a liquidity monster. Looking forward to participating should it be finished, tested, and voted through. So could this mean potential profits for XRP holders holding their XRP? You know, theories that we were talking about back in 2018 and 2019 finally coming to market. Note XLS 30D is listed in the xrplf.org GitHub as a standard proposal. It is under discussion and I highly recommend you read the discussions. Uh, it is not currently an amended proposal being voted on just yet. 
So still yet to be determined, guys. Nevertheless, uh, this puts XRP holders potentially in a position to make profits, holding your XRP, utilizing, leveraging your XRP as a potential market maker, reaping more profits while providing liquidity for the overall ecosystem. It sounds like a win-win to me, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.